Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is a pleasure with you. It is a pleasure to be here with you to uh, expound the Word of God. I'm going to begin uh, uh, a several-part series on nuggets from the Old Testament. I want to share from the Old Testament truths which I believe are critical as we're living here in the last days. And so, as we begin this uh, series on nuggets from the Old Testament, we're going to look at interesting stories, stories I've heard before, and I want us to garner critical lessons to help us to live a life that is totally and completely dedicated to the God of heaven. Before I begin, I'd like to offer a prayer. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, the word of God is about to be expounded. Uh, Father God, as we dig into the truths of your word, it is my prayer, Lord, that your people, whoever is watching this video, may be inspired to live for you. Father, we're going to talk about nuggets of truths from the Old Testament. We're going to look at interesting stories. And Father, I pray that as I share, Lord, you may do something to my own heart. And so, Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first nugget is going to be found in the book of Exodus. There we have Moses detailing to us the birth of a nation. And so when Moses is writing, he sees it fit for us to understand a very not well-known story. It seems to be passed over. But today I do not want us to pass it over. I want us to spend time to analyze this very interesting and known story. It is a story of the Hebrew midwives there in Exodus chapter 1 uh, verses 15. And I would like to read uh, to your hearing. And the Bible says, And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shifra and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, cast this, then ye shall kill him. But if be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing? And have saved the men children alive. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively. And are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed. Very mighty. And verse 21, And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. The message is entitled, The Victim of Circumstances. So here we have a situation. Uh, it's an interesting situation. Pharaoh has a plan. And the plan is to destroy any newborn baby. What a cruel thing to do. And I'm sure the mothers out there, if they would analyze this, they would say, why would someone want to destroy innocent babies? You see, what you need to understand is that uh, the, the nation of Israel is prospering. The Bible says that the people were exceedingly many. And so you see, Pharaoh wanted to uh, lessen, he wanted to control uh, the population. If we're talking in our times today, I would think of uh, nations like the United States, for example. Too many people are coming into the country. It is a land of opportunity. And so in order to control, there is stiff immigration law. I've been hearing reports in our people in Tanzania, those who have even papers 
They have passports. They have uh, birth certificates. They have been born in Tanzania. But because they're not originally uh, blooded Tanzanians, the president, playing it safe, wants to chase all the people out of the country. And so you see, Pharaoh had a similar uh, idea. The people of Israel are multiplying. Something has to be done. And so he says, when you do your office, midwives, the Bible calls them Shifra and Poah. He talked to them. He says, when you do this office, when it, is, when it is a son, I want you to kill them. When it is a daughter, she can live. Now you see, what you need to understand is that uh, uh, when a nation was conquered, it was a practice that the, 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 the king would kill all of the males. You see, killing all the males, essentially, would annihilate the nation. There would be no progenitors of the race. And so Pharaoh's plan was simply like this. I do not want this nation we call Israel to exist. And so Pharaoh had a plan. But in order to execute this plan, he needed the help of the Hebrew midwives. He tells me something. That these Hebrew midwives could in fact have played a part. A big part in the plan of Pharaoh. Why would he ask him in the first place? But the Bible says that the, the Hebrew midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them but saved the men and children alive. This is the nugget I want to share with you uh, today. The fear of God. The fear of God. And the question has to be, what is the fear of God? What does it mean to fear God? You see, rather than do the plan of Pharaoh, the Bible says that the Hebrew midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded. The king of Egypt was a powerful man. Some of you, wherever you are, you are serving under a powerful leader. Some of you, where you are, you're serving under a teacher who is powerful. You're serving under a university president who is powerful. You're serving under a boss who is powerful. But the question has to be, do you fear him more than God? As a Christian, who do you fear, God or man? And the title is the victim of circumstances. What does it mean? to fear God. I want us to turn to the book of Genesis uh, chapter 22. And we're going to understand what it means to fear God. And we're going to look at three texts uh, to help us to understand. Genesis chapter 22, a very interesting story there is, is told. God says to Abraham, the father of faith, take your son, your only son, bring him to the mountain and, uh, and, and sacrifice him. Now imagine this man. Abraham, the name means uh, a father of many. He did not have a son and he has this only son. And God says, take him to the mountain and sacrifice him. And notice what the Bible here uh, tells us. We're looking in Genesis chapter 22. In verse 12, the Bible tells us. And he said, God talking to Abraham, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know, God saying, For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast withheld, thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. So please here understand me, my friends. You see, to fear God, it means to put him first. Nothing, not even your own family, should come before you and God. And so you see Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son. And the Bible says, God says, now I know you fear God. So here understand, to fear God, it means to put him first. Not allowing anything. It doesn't matter whether that boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm talking to those lovers. It doesn't matter whether that boss or teacher. 
I'm talking to those subordinates. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what the situation. But nobody, nobody comes between you and God. And that's what it means uh, to fear God. So Abraham would not even let his only son, the son whom he had wanted for so long, the son whom God had promised, he is the one whom I'm going to raise up a nation through. To fear God, it means to put God first. There's another text. I'm not going to turn to it, but it's in Proverbs. I believe Proverbs chapter 1 verse 17. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Catch that word. Is the beginning of knowledge. So you can never be wise if you don't put God first. And I want to speak to university students because sometimes we tend to believe that our academics should be first. We tend to believe that I need to study. We burn the mineral oil or try to study. We put off our spiritual activities. But my friends, to have knowledge, we need to put God first. The beginning of knowledge is to fear God. And there's another text in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. And the, 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 the preacher man, Solomon, I love this man, the wise man, he says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and give glory to him, for this is the fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So you see, my friends, we exist. Our whole life purpose is to put God first. Nothing, absolutely nothing should ever come between you and God. So you see, these Hebrew midwives, they said, no, king, God is first. And so, because they wanted to put God first, they understood that life is sacred to God. They would not dare. They wouldn't even think of it. To kill that precious baby. My friends, you see, to fear God, it means to keep him, to keep him first. In the things that we do, whether it be in the home, whether it be in, in school, whether it be in our social relationships, whether we are working, I don't care what you have, I don't care what you're doing, but God should be a first. You see, my friends, because these Hebrew midwives feared God, they were kept from sin. You didn't catch that. Because these Hebrew midwives feared God, they were kept from sin. You see, my friends, if you fear God, you will not dare to put that alcohol bottle to your lips. You see, my friend, if you fear God, you will not dare to gossip. You see, my friends, if you fear God, you will not dare to cheat on your husband. You will not dare to cheat on your wife. You see, my friends, to fear God allows us, makes you and me always to be in the path of righteousness. And the title of the message today is The Victim of Circumstances. When you read further down, the Bible here tells us, in verse 18, And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing? And have saved the men children alive. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively. And I delivered her unto the midwives, come in unto them. Now you see some scholars say, These midwives lied. They are lying. For them to say this to Pharaoh. But you see, there's something you don't understand about this story. You see, when a woman who is pregnant uh, spends most of her time being uh, uh, pampered, uh, the maid does all the housework. It has been discovered that normally, most of the times, these women have a hard time in labor. Now, what you need to understand is that at this time, the Hebrew midwives, the Hebrew people, women, men, young girls, young boys, they are all slaves of Egypt. They are working, building the, 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 the buildings of Egypt. And so they are doing hard labor. 
And so what they have discovered, this is scientifically proven, when a woman who is in labor, she engages in, in activities around the house. And this is, I'm talking to those women who are pregnant listening to me. If you're being lazy, my friend, you're going to have hard labor. But you see, when a woman who is pregnant puts it in their mind, I'm going to do the things that I normally do. I'm going to clean. I'm going to cook. I'm going to take the kids to school. When she does these things, most of the times, she has easier labor. And so you see, the Hebrew midwives, they did not lie. Matter of fact, it is a testament to how God blesses someone who is committed to keeping him first. When you say, I'm going to keep you first, Lord, the Lord will bless you. So you see, they could come before Pharaoh boldly. Pharaoh, understand us. Look, we know what you're saying, but the truth of the matter is, these women are blessed. And so you see, my friends, when you put God first, he will prepare the way for you. I want to believe that God blessed the Hebrew women, gave them strength. And you see, before these women are called to do their duty, the baby is already born. So they, all they do is say, wow, the baby is already born. They have nothing to do because God had blessed them. I'm going to get back to that point. But you see, I want us to, to, to analyze this issue a little bit more. It's very, very important. I want you to come with me to the book of Genesis. And you see, we're drawing a lot from the book of Genesis because, you see, this is the foundation. Genesis is, is the beginning. Now, you see here in Genesis chapter 15, we have a very, very interesting story. And my friends, this is the critical part of this message. Why it is important for us to fear God. And, and, and I, I want you to, to follow with me in verse 13. The Bible here says, God talking to Abraham. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them. And they shall flick them 400 years. Now what you need to understand. When we are talking about the Hebrew midwives. Their 400 years have come to an end. And so you see. God prophesied before. He said your people are going to be slaves in Egypt. For 400 years. They're going to be afflicted. And so you see. When we are talking about the Hebrew midwives. We have come to the end of the 400 years. And also that nation. Talking about the Egyptian nation. That they shall serve. Will I judge? And afterward shall they come out with great substance. Now my friends, what you need to understand is this. God had a plan. Abraham, your descendants, they're going to go to Egypt. They're going to be afflicted. Pharaoh is going to want to kill them. This is what's going to happen. But you see, at the end of 400 years, according to my plan, they are going to come out with great substance. And so you see, my friends, here is something critical. Because these Hebrew midwives feared God, they played a part in the plan of God. You see, the book of Exodus is detailing to us the birth of a nation. Pharaoh's plan is destroy the nation. God's plan, I want this nation to be uh, to come up. I want this nation whom through the Messiah is going to be born. I want this nation to be established. Pharaoh wants to destroy God's plan, but because the Hebrew mirrors feared God, they played a, par a part in the plan of God. My friends, that is powerful. My friends, that is powerful. God's plan was that the nation of Israel would be the nation whom the Messiah would be born. God's plan was that you and me could experience the gift of salvation. God's plan was that you and me would know that there is a heavenly high priest, Jesus Christ. And all of this had to happen through the nation of Israel. And so you see my friends, because these women said no. We fear God. They play the part in the plan of God. My friends, you have a part to play in the plan of God. If I'm speaking to seven Adventists, I will tell them, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. This is the three angels' messages. There is nobody else. There is nobody else preaching this. 
And so you see, God has a plan to let his people know that I want you to worship me on the Sabbath day. God has a plan to let his people know that I need my people to eat right. God has a plan for this world. And if you are Seventh-day Adventist listening to me, God has that plan for you. And so you see, my friends, when we fear God, when we put God first, we allow ourselves to be used in the plan of God. You see, my friends, these Hebrew midwives, though they did not know, I believe they didn't know, that God had foretold this experience. Maybe they knew, I don't know. But I want to believe they didn't know. But you see, my friends, because they feared God, they played a part in the plan of God. And so, my friends, understand this nugget we're getting today. When we put God first, when we allow Him To be the centerpiece of our lives. We play a part in the plan of salvation. We play a part in leading somebody to Jesus. My friend, God has a plan for your life. And God's plan for your life is not to be a drunkard. God's plan for your life is not to be a porn addict. God's plan for your life is for you to lead others to Jesus. God wants to see you vibrant. Now here is something very, very interesting. As I'm getting to the close of this message. The fear of men makes a man the victim of circumstances. I don't know if you got that. The fear of men makes a man, makes a woman, makes a teenager, makes a young man, a boy or girl, the victim of circumstances. That's the title of my message, the victim of circumstances. And it continues to say, but the fear of God brings rest in the midst of tumult and peace in the face of mortal danger. My friends, you see many of us are victims of circumstances. Because we don't fear God, because we fear men more than God, we become victims of circumstances. You see, these Hebrew midwives would not allow themselves to be victims of circumstances. You see, we have this idea that if I do this for this person, if I please them, I'm going to win them. But you know the problem with human nature? When you do something today, he's going to ask something else tomorrow. That's human nature. And so you see, we deceive ourselves thinking that if I do this to please this person, then I'm going to win them over. But we do not know that we are only making ourselves victims of circumstances. Are you a victim of circumstances? You see, some of us are in the situations that we are in because we fear people more than we fear God. You are pregnant today because you feared losing a relationship. You are a drunkard today because you feared not looking popular at the party. You are in your situation today because you refuse to stand up for what you know was right. And so many of us, victims of circumstances, because we fear people more than we fear God. There is a story in, uh, that, I, that I often like to share. A young girl, beautiful young girl, had a future. A very Christian young lady, a studious in class. And you know, she would attend classes and made good grades. But there was only one problem that she had. She didn't have a so-called love relationship. And so her friends would say, hey, Sharon, that was her name. Sharon, you don't have a boyfriend. Uh, and, and, they would, and Sharon would see her friends with their boyfriends walking down the street. You would see her friends with their boyfriends being sent text messages, sweet nothings, sweet lies. And so Sharon in her heart, you know, was touched. I want a boyfriend. 
But what you need to understand about Sharon is that she was a Christian young lady. She knew what was right. She knew it was wrong to drink. She knew it was wrong to sleep around. She knew it wasn't right to stay out at night. Am I talking to somebody? And so she met this young man. His name was Phil. And Phil, you know, he was, a, he was a, an athlete. We would call him a jock if he was in America. A jock is somebody who is very popular. All the girls like him. Normally he's muscular. Very popular guy in school. So she met this young man. His name was Phil. And so you see, Phil was showing Sharon attention. And she says, Sharon, you're so beautiful. Sharon had never heard that she was so beautiful before from a young man. Sharon, I like the way you walk. Sharon, I like the way you talk. Sharon, you are so, you are so nice. And so you can understand, Sharon started to feel good. Sharon says, wow, I have somebody who likes me. And so eventually they got into a relationship. And uh, remember I told you that Sharon was a Christian young lady. She knew it was wrong to sleep around. She knew it was wrong not to be alone with somebody for so long. I hope some of us know this. But you see, Phil said, Sharon, if you love me, then... You will show me your fullest love. He was demanding sex from her. And you see, being a, a Christian young lady, she was fighting within herself. Am I going to give in to the demands of my boyfriend? Or am I going to stick to my Christian heritage? But Phil was so persistent. And eventually, Sharon gave in. To cut the long story short, Sharon became pregnant. Phil eventually dumped her. She lost her Christian faith. Future gone. That's a case of a victim of circumstances. You see, my friends, this nugget we have understood today, I believe that if we can apply this Allowing God to teach us how to fear Him. Allowing God to teach us how to keep Him first. Allowing God to give us that spiritual spine that will tell ourselves, Lord, what come what may, I'm going to stand for the right. Come what may, I'm going to stand for conscience. Come what may, give me strength. I believe we're going to be more powerful Christians. I believe that people will take notice and they will say, you know that young man, that young woman, that man, that woman, ah, there's something different about them. God has a plan, my friends, for your life. And so I want to encourage each one of us to allow God to fully use us. And so as I bring this message to a close, I'd like to pray for you and ask God to bless you in his life, in your life. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, many times we are victims of circumstances. But Lord, we need strength. We need courage, Lord, to stand for truth. We need courage, Lord, to stand for conscience. I believe that whoever is listening to me knows what is right. But peer pressure is so strong sometimes. And we succumb to the demands of people around us because we want to fit in. We want to be popular. But Lord, we have understood from the Hebrew midwives that they would rather fear you than give in to the demands of Pharaoh. And so we want to be like them. We want strength. We want courage, Father. Father, I'd like to take this time out to pray for whoever is listening to this message that your spirit may move upon them and touch their hearts. Father, bless all around them. Provide for their needs. Keep them and guide them. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. And I humbly ask and pray all of these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen.